Hey, Katie. Um, so I made some bad choices and forgot to record up until this point. And it seems like, oh, only you've missed this, but you've actually missed quite a bit of other things. Um, that was the unit circle, but I will make a photocopy of that for you on Monday and we will be able to catch up pretty fast. Um, so far, we've talked about these ones, good old Sokotoa, which is right up here. It's probably a good refresher for everybody who's watching anyway, right? So that's Sokotoa. These ones, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, are the opposites of those. So feel free to pause this video at any time. Um, by opposites, I mean reciprocals, as in H over O compared to O over H. Also, since they're reciprocals, you can say that cosecant is 1 over sine, secant is 1 over cosine, and cotangent is 1 over tangent. So these kind of all go together in a line. Also, we did a little proof over here that shows that tangent is also equal to sine over cosine, and since cotangent is the reciprocal, it is cosine over sine. I know this is overwhelming, but we will figure it out, especially as we're using it, and I'll make sure to catch you up on the unit circle on Monday. Okay. Again, pause the video if you need to copy this down. All right, so the terminal side of an angle theta in standard position passes through the point negative 3, negative 4. And we're supposed to find the value of all six trig functions. Okay. Yeah, it does look like an egg. Yeah. All right, now it needs to pass through the point negative 3, negative 4. Where is the point? Ne what quadrant is negative 3, negative 4 in? Mm -hmm. uh, the last one. Yeah, that, that's the third quadrant, yeah. Bottom left. I said, where is the third quadrant? You said number three. I said that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you did. Oh, you did? Bottom left. Yep, this one down here. You said what quadrant is that in? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, where's the third quadrant? Okay, so negative three, negative four. Um, let's say that that is like negative three, negative four. We're going to put it right here. We'll call that negative three. Negative 4 right there. I have a dumb question. Go ahead. Okay, so for like this, isn't there supposed to be like a guy in there for the head right here with his arms like this and his feet like right here? No, oh, that's actually um, the uh, Peruvian man. Is that what it's called? Peruvian? Um, something like that. Da Vinci? Yeah, and uh, he modeled it off of the unit circle, yeah. But, yeah, you've seen that where it's like he's like kind of spread eagle and right like it's all about like uh, supposed the to be body. the human body and like anatomy of exactly how big somebody would be and he modeled it off of trigonometry. There is beauty in math, surprisingly. I know. Weird, right? Um, so what I want you to do now is I want you to draw kind of like a triangle like this. And we're drawing it so that this is a right triangle, which is why we can use trigonometry. And we're going to be talking about this angle right here. And then I am going to redraw it over here kind of big. Uh, it will always be that way where our base is going to be on this line, and we're going to do it enough that you'll know. Um, but even if you drew it 
over here instead, it would still end up with exactly the same answers because they're mirror images of each other. The hypotenuse needs to be where from the center out to where the point is. So either way, if it's inverted, it's fine. Okay, so now here's the question. This is a triangle. I've got a theta here, right? Can somebody tell me what's this length of the triangle? Kyle? Three. Three. Do you guys see how this says negative three here? And that means that the the x, you know, do you guys realize that this is like, this is like a, this is the y-axis right here, and this is the x-axis right here? Okay, and you've got zero, zero in the center. Do you understand that this is kind of like a graph almost? And that I'm moving to the left three and then down four, and that's why it says negative three, negative four. So this length here is three. And this length is what? Four. Four. Everybody with me? How would we find out what that last one is? Five. It is because it's a three, four, five triangle, but you could do that. Right, so in case you forgot that there were things called 3, 4, 5 triangles, you could say, well, but a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so this is really 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared, which is 9 plus 16, which makes 25. Mm -hmm. Square root makes 5. So, I mean, you could do it the long way on the side if you needed to, but a 3, 4, 5 triangle is pretty standard at this point. Is it only it works with 3, 4, 5, and also any multiples of that. So it could be like 6, 8, 10. It could be 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. As long as that relationship stays the same, it could be any multiple of it. So you could multiply each side by 8. I think there's one more that's really popular. It's like with 15. 5, 12, 13. 25, 144. Yeah, you're right. 5, 12, 13. Nice. You're brilliant. So like, could there be like a one-third, one-fourth, and one-fifth triangle? Yep. Hmm. That also works. Interesting. As long as it is still this relationship or like Crystal said, 5, 12, 13 relationship, that would always be the same. Um, but uh, if it's not that, you're going to have to actually do the Pythagorean theorem, which is, I know, horrible. But you'll make it. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to list all six trig functions based on this little triangle. But some of them are going to be negative, but we'll figure that out in a bit, okay? So write down for me cosine of theta, sine of theta, tangent of theta, and then right next to them, what's the opposite of cosine? Do you guys remember? Secant. Secant. And if you didn't remember, you can look at your unit circle and know that your <coughs> unit circle says that secant is the opposite of cosine, right? And that cosecant is the opposite of sine. Also, I don't know if you remember me saying it, but the S's don't go together and the C's don't go together. They're opposites. And cotangent obviously goes with tangent. These problems at the beginning are very difficult to comprehend the whole idea, but the math is ridiculously simple, which is nice because the math kind of in this class so far has been like tedious and long, right? And like each problem takes you like eight pages to do. Common denominator with all those fractions, like it's a nightmare, I get it, but these are pretty simple. All right, so cosine. Cosine of theta. What do you have to do for cosine, guys? Adjacent over hypotenuse. All right, which one is adjacent compared to this theta? Three. And the hypotenuse is? So this one is three-fifths. Did we do this what? In Thorson's? And you guys remember it so well. Okay. Hating these? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, you're going to be all right. How about sine? Four over five. Four over five. Opposite over what did you say? Height. 
No one ever says that. You're just trying to destroy me now. You what? You do not say hypotenuse in your head. You say hype. I did say hype. Oh my gosh. What in the world? All right, tangent. Okay, Tanner. 